Okay, so welcome to another Dharma gathering. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the four chokshak of Sugjin. And in particular, I'm sharing based on my experience um, as taught by Namkai Norbu Rinpoche. And I say that two reasons. One, I'm just going to share from my experience uh, for what it's worth. And then, but I'm going to be quoting Namkai Norbu in particular. And uh, Crystal and the Way of Light, that's a book you can get. And he, he talks about the four choke shock, uh, in, especially in the appendix. And then there's a private publication, Song of the Vajra, which is a book I love. It's kind of informal, but covers a lot of topics. But you have to have had transmission at some point from him in order to get it. I don't know. I feel like it's one that should just be public. But um, if you have ever received a transmission from him, then you can go on the uh, on their site and order it. Uh, so the other thing is like if you Google the four choke shock, you're going to see different ways of talking about that. Uh, each one of them in the presentation. And I just personally find that they're not presented face value as pragmatically as you're going to see here with Namkai Norbus. Um, but that's just my experience and bias. Um, but sometimes they're, they might be, they sound quite different in some regard regards. So just know if you're familiar, I'm just going with this, this option here. So Chokshak translates as, as it is. And there are four different ways of to practice in leaving things as they are. Uh, another quote is to remain being as it is. So we're going to work with that phrase in social meditation today, as it is. Um, so Jin gives a lot of ways to, I mean, you start with recognizing uh, the nature of awareness, nature of mind, uh, direct spontaneous presence and then finding ways to work with our experience such that this just becomes naturally how we are uh, we abide naturally easily uh, in a more integrated way in our, our life and so these four choke shock are in that spirit and so in certain ways you can see it perhaps is almost a non-meditation. So, you know, meditation, non-meditation, it has, as you'll see, I mean, there's practice instructions, but when it comes down to it, you'll start feeling like it's a non-meditation. Um, but it's also really helpful in terms of integration. And I'll get into what these four choke shock are, but I kind of just wanted to set it up for you all. Some of the results from this, again, is integration, but also letting go of the duality between practicing and not practicing. So even between what is meditation and what is not meditation, because you see, for example, the first one is um, basically whatever position the body is in, that is the position of practice. So it's quite radical. So like if there's a, a, I need an instruction, I need a form, I need a, if I do this, then that. And, and then the answer is whatever your position of your body, that's the position. Then what happens to all these ideals? Um, so it can dissolve those because if all of the positions you could be in are equal in terms of the state of presence, well, then not much different between our formal practice and not practicing. Um, then it can help reframe practice. So I think this is the thing I love about Sogjin is, uh, describing it as a start with the end and work backwards as needed. So whatever you need in practice, that's what you do. And you can take this view, if you do these four choke shock and it's still gnawing at you in your experience that, no, I really need some form. I need something specific. I need a particular position for the body. You can at least carry this view in that ultimately there's no particular position that you need to be in. It's not going to produce the state of presence. So at least, you know, even if we are formally practicing, we can take this as a view into practice. Um, I think along with that, so you know, 
if we think practice should be a certain way, that also means we have uh, ideals about awakening what it is. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to read one of my favorite little teachings, the six Vajra verses, which are in here. The nature of phenomena is non-dual, but each one in its own state is beyond the limits of the mind. There is no concept that can define the condition of what is. But vision nevertheless manifests. All is good. Everything has already been accomplished, and so, having overcome the sickness of effort, one finds oneself in the self-perfected state. This is contemplation. So, if we have ideals about what is, and then our practice is tied to that, and then we start taking up a practice like these four choke shock, something's going to happen <laughs> with all the ideals we have and reactions around what uh, awakening is, what meditation is. What it has to do with life, etc. Um, can bring up the the question. Well, well, now what? Both in a positive or a negative way. So, whatever the position the body's in, it's cool. Well, negative. Well, now what? I thought I had a plan, something to do. Or it could be in a really relaxed way. Well, well, now what? Doesn't matter. Mm, I don't know. Uh, this uh, correlates, as I've already alluded to, if you know uh, Garb Dorje's three statements, the third statement in particular. So direct introduction, don't remain in doubt, and three, continuing confidence. So this is where that one is really seated, is more of like this continuation, natural, spontaneous continuation. Uh, La Molina uh, has a, a short phrase that I've been hearing her say in the videos I've been watching, relax, let it go, let it be, which is really nice. Now, if you, you just take that at face value, it could sound out of context, like something you put up on a cheesy cliche on a, on a wall, you know, it's like, what does that mean? But in the context of Sogjin, it's really good instructions, really simplified. So as it is, uh, let it be. Okay, four choke shock. So the first one is the uh, Rewo choke shock. It's a uh, choke shock of, of the mountain, and the body is left as it is. So whenever I'm sharing these kind of like summaries, this is going to be Namkai Norbu. Whatever the position of the body, this is the position of practice. Note, it doesn't mean not moving. So we say position, but it also includes movement of the body. So um, Namkai Norbu talks about that, you know, in different circumstances of life, we have different pos positions of the body. So why wouldn't we be practicing in a way that includes any and all possible positions? And I love that he gives <laughs> specifically the example of going to a to the toilet <laughs> in contemplation. Uh, he says, uh, no need to go to a temple. So even if you're taking a shit, body as it is, <laughs> it's great. It's a great example to cut through ideals. Uh, the next one, Gyamso Chokshak, which is Chokshak of the o of the ocean. Nam Kainorbu specifically says this one's about the eyes, the position of the eyes. That whatever the, the position of the eyes, that is the position of the practice. No particular gaze is needed. So open, closed, whatever you're looking at, still or moving. And he ties us to the clarity um, within our senses, the clarity of awareness, and that if you work with the eyes, you automatically are working with the rest of the senses in a certain way. Although, depending on our physical disposition, you know, if uh, there were, uh, if, if sight was limited, then you could work with sound, you know, your ears. Um, and so this clarity, for me, ties into uh, how La Molina describes that awareness is not a dead old nothing. So we can really attune to that clarity through the senses and their openness. But what's great I love about these is like the practice instructions are really simple. It's about your eyes. Whatever position your eyes are in, that's the practice. And so you just take that and then see what is coming up for you. If there's twinges and grasping or whatever's happening, you can investigate that and then Relax, let it go, let it be. Uh, Rigpa Chokshak, 
this is a choke shock of the state of contemplation. And this is, uh, oh, I want, let me circle back around to the, the eyes real quick. I wanted to also highlight there's, there's, we're not shutting down or controlling or constricting our senses. Eyes could be closed. But this is a really important one, and Namkai Norbu would make a, a big distinction about that, for example, uh, inside the Tibetan Buddhist tradition and like sutra and like the practice of concentration. There's really a shutting shutting down, blocking out, and that could be really useful. But here we're being explicit that there's no need to shut anything down with our sense, sensory experience. Okay, choke shock of a state of contemplation. Uh, one's own state is left as it is. And he specifically brought, brought up the question, oh, so someone's going to practice and they say, well, how should the mind be? You know, visualizing, what should I be doing with it? And it's like, however the mind is, however your state is, that's how the practice is. And uh, we want to read a quote here from uh, Namkai Norbu. The answer is... Uh, the state of instant presence. How should the mind be? The answer is the state of instant presence. And that is the state of Rigpa without changing, modifying, or creating anything. This means we are in the nature of the mirror instead of being like reflections. We may have infinite reflections and no problem with them. So confusion, contraction, expansiveness, whatever state of consciousness. And uh, the highlight here without correction this is a thing that gets repeated quite a lot. So this is, a, I like the first two, body and eyes. There's something tangible. It's like, okay, body, eyes, what am I doing here? And you can come back and I can relax over and over with that. The state of mind could be a little trickier because we could be grossly or subtly trying to have a particular experience. Oh no, a little like this. No, a little bit more like that. Oh yeah, here I'm going on the right track. No, not on the right track. And that can lead to all kinds of experiences, maybe <laughs> commonly either burnout frustration with it, but possibility of exhausting that out. And then, oh, which is why a lot of times in Sok Jin, there are practices to just simply exhaust this out. You want something to do? It's like get that big Kong bones for the, for the dogs. <laughs> you know, it's just like chew on that while until you're like, I give up. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> but you know there can be relief in this and just being like okay uh, and, and humor like how hilarious is this that i'm just like constantly uh, trying to change what's going on it's it's, bit, it's like what's the point with respect to presence it's all arising in mind so who gives a shit <laughs> there's not the same thing namgai norbu makes a big deal when we talk about behavior to not confuse this with saying like, I just do whatever in the world, nothing matters. It's like, no, no, no. It's like in this presence, we have more awareness and choice about what is most appropriate, especially based off our own disposition. So we pay attention to our things. So caveat there. Okay, last one is called uh, Nangwa Chokshak, which is Chokshak of vision. But here we might say karmic vision, this gets a little bit more nerdy in Sok Jim, but he, the easier thing, he says, this is mainly about the sense objects and objects of the mind. So form, color, sounds, all phenomena, all appearances, inner and outer, pure, impure, samsara, nirvana, all good, no problem. And in particular, all objects are uh, seen as ornaments of the primordial state. So all any objects of all the senses, including the, the mind, it's all good. It's like we said in the Song of the Vajra, or the, the Vajra verses, six Vajra verses, it's all good. So covers a lot, all of it as it is. That's just the <laughs> refrain, the mantra there, as it is. So I like that these lead to a really simple form of practice that I think is accessible. And what I was going to propose for us is um, four different rounds of social meditation, just to get a taste of each of these. And uh, it'll be spontaneous. And we're just going to use a we have an option here, fill in the blank, and then as it is. So the first round will be body as it is. Next one will be seeing as it is. Third one, mind as it is. And the fourth one, I'm going with object as it is. 
it's kind of funny partly I, I might choose something else but you know what if you want to say objects as they are that's okay too but we want to hone in on that so it's objects of the senses okay so very simple it's spontaneous as as you are <laughs> in the practice you can vocalize that and we'll be in small groups and i'll check in for questions on this before we do it um but even if everything i said was gobbledygook uh in actuality <laughs> or perceived uh these phrases hopefully give you something to work with that's pretty simple and uh see what happens <laughs>